You did? Cause I got a one fan. Hey, look at that. $10,000 bill. Are you kidding me? <laughs> if only it were true. Oh, so far today, I've just got, just picked up some bits. Some little bits of copper and brass down there. Not a whole lot, but these are real nice here. These uh, rubber made tote lids. They're brand new. They've obviously never been used. And those are specifically the kind of totes I use. So that's actually a real good find for me personally. And I, I have, I, I keep like my tools and these little ones. So I don't really use them lids, but those would be handy, you know, someday. I might have a use for them, so it's no no problem storing flat stuff like that. So hold on on it. Got some Zippo fuel. I have no need for that. A lot of times these boxes here, where people like clean out their desk drawer or something, they'll be real nice boxes to find stuff. You know, there'll be like money in here and all kind of stuff. But this one really doesn't have much value in it. These are. These little Ford emblems are made out of oven aluminum, so that's not bad. I might pick up another one of those. I might have a full pound. So there's a little piece of aluminum, a little keychain, little piston, or whatever that is. So you know, you look down at something, you don't think there's anything in there, but you know, you start looking a little closer, you know, and I mean that's. Just look like a box of garbage, and all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, I got you know a pound of aluminum in my hand right there. So it adds up, that's for sure. A little flashlight keychain. So. About it. A lot of times stuff like money will get stuck under these flaps and stuff. Anyway, that box could have been better I suppose. But, uh, got a little something out of it. Well, it looked promising there for a while. But that's it. Looks like we got some fishing pole action going in there. See two of them. I'm gonna shut the camera off, and if they're any good, I'll, I'll uh, we'll have a look at them. Oh, I see a scooter handle sticking out of there too. I'll grab that stuff. Oh, I jumped in there, got them fishing poles. That, that bicycle, I'm just gonna leave in there. It's just a, a tin frame. And where I live, the price of tin is so low. It's just, you know, it's just, you know, it's just not worth my time and and struggle and effort. To, you know, it just stopped me from going out and finding the good stuff. You know, but you know, if tin was up where where it used to be, you know, like ten cents a pound or whatever, you know, where I live, you know, I, you know, I'd probably take that or come back for it, you know, later tonight or something. You know, but it's just, you know, a three and four cents a pound. That's like, you know, the bike right there might be, you know, like 90 cents, you know, 80 cents maybe. <laughs> but here's some good stuff. Both those poles had, uh, you know, they're perfectly fine. All the, all the eyes are nice. Both the reels work perfectly. They, they've both seen very little use. It's obvious. They just need to take that dust and cobwebs off of them. And, you know, fishing poles like that, they, they always hold value. I mean, there's just no way around that. You know, regardless of you using yourself or pawn shop or sell them online or in lots or about, you know, just th th those aren't, you know, those one's a Shakespeare, one's a Zebco, so they're not like super valuable. But you know, as long as fishing rods and reels are in good working condition, they're valuable regardless what they are. And uh, then this little little scooter here. The handle's a little loose. Actually, it's in pretty good working order itself, but I'm just gonna take that to the scrapyard. But, you know, it's all made out of aluminum, but uh, because it's got those tires and some steel nuts and plastic and stuff on it, it'll just qualify as aluminum breakage. 
and uh, that's like 10 cents a pound and it's just not worth your time to you know take all those nuts off and clean like like that hinge right there that's all metal you know, it's just it'd take a long time to to clean that up so I mean if you could if you really wanted to you know it's your time you do what you what you want with your time you know but for me I just I just take this straight to the scrapyard be done with it Yahtzee <laughs> this is that same dumpster I was at the other night where I got all those uh, ballasts and those aluminum light fixtures and stuff where that that building where that dumpster was at at least part of that building they've gutted and then now they, they got rid of the big construction dumpster and now they're just going through and looks like they replaced the lights last week and now they're now they're taking out all the old uh, window blinds and these are all aluminum and when there's a bunch of them in a group like this that's it's a very nice score actually uh, you just like these bars here are made out of tin so you just cut these strings it'll be a tin bar on the bottom and top and you just cut these strings and it's really easy to clean all the aluminum out of there and uh, that's actually quite a bit of aluminum. I mean, there's, there might be, there might be a, a dozen, 15 of them suckers in there. So and there might be even more under there, but I'm gonna shut the camera off and get these out of here. I yanked those out of there and there was actually exactly 12. And uh, the aluminum in these dogs is gonna be about, it's gonna be about, two or three pounds a piece thereabouts so to, uh, we're gonna call that about 25 pounds of aluminum yeah when I give weights out like that it's not gonna be exactly right because I just don't know without a scale but you know there it's just an estimate you know a fairly close estimate so but uh, yeah I, you know and a lot of scrap yards will do things differently like I, I, I can just take the those, those tin bars I can just cut those off of there and I can get uh, you know clean clean sheet aluminum for, for the aluminum blinds and then the bars will be you know just the normal tin price but you know there might be some scrap yards that that will call this you know dirty aluminum and some scrap yards will make you like take these strings off of here for it to be clean you know and some scrap yards just don't care you know because they all send their stuff to different mills and just it's just it's really amazing how different scrapyards really are. There's no uniform, there's no uniformity, you know, I mean, just across the industry, you know, as far as scrapyards. I mean, the scrapyards just where I live are just really, really different from each other. And it sounded like there was just about an accident down there. I don't know if you guys heard that or not. But anyway, so that's a nice little score there. Ah, here at this car wash, and what do I find? But three more dead ducks in the garbage. Two of them are actually hens. So obviously, a, a great outdoorsman's been at work again. I got a nice little load going here. Pulled up this dumpster. Look down there. I seen that brass faucet. And a little bit of a little bit of insulated, low-grade insulated copper wire. I reached down there. And, sometimes <laughs> I fall for this all the time is all that paint is actually wet paint I just reach down there and grab that pipe just like this so <laughs> that happens quite often so I can't really give you any tips for that because this is sneaky <laughs> it's just it's just something you just you just you don't see coming you know you just don't think it's wet you know I see tons of TVs like that. I, I just pass it up. There's not much I can do. I mean, there's not a whole lot of scrap value in it for me. I mean, there is a little bit, but it's just time consuming. I'm just on the fly, generally, so. You know, if something like that was real close to my, where I lived, I, you know, I might take it home, but. I'm about seven miles away, six miles away, so I'm just gonna leave it sitting there. But for someone that can fix that kind of stuff, man, it, there's a, there might be a little industry out there for you. 
And now those giant microwaves like that, uh, I just have, I used to mess with them when the tin price was up. I used to, I used to rip the motors out of there and I bungee cord that thing to my tote. But, uh, hey, there's a little piece of aluminum breakage down there I'll get. And I'll take this cord off of it too. But I just, I just don't mess with them no more. The prices are so low. It's just, you know, I'd, I'd have to make a special trip just for that. And, you know, it'd be worth about dollar twenty. You know, dollar fifty. It's just, it's not worth it for me. But anyway, microwaves like that, those big giant ones are just, just, you know, the price of tin is so low. It's, they're just not worth it. So, this is my kind of microwave right here, though. The little guys, you know, the normal size guys. That 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 thing there is two or three times the size. I don't know if you can see that. It's a big giant. It's really not all that heavy. It's just big and goofy. But uh, those are my kind right there. You know, I could turn it turn it this way. You know, and, and just keep putting stuff in there and just keep going and going and going. You know. So it actually actually is you know add add more volume for me. You know. So I never pass up them guys. It's uh, ice cube tray ice cube maker out of a freezer and uh, that, that gray part there is all all pure plastic or I mean <laughs> all pure aluminum and uh, it's got a little bit of insulated copper on it these are always nice little guys to find you know I, I don't mess around you know cleaning them and getting that aluminum off of there but I just, I just sell it for aluminum breakage but and I suppose probably clean them up you know but I just I just take them in like that be done with it so I'll just put that in there for now put this bungee down here like this so it don't come sliding out so that'd be a nice little deal but yeah those are a fairly common thing though they're valuable little guys especially when the prices come up all right, here's those 12 blinds I found, plus I added another one to make it 13. And I'm just gonna cut all the aluminum off of there. Just take all these strings off. That's not very time consuming. You can get it done pretty quick. Yeah, you know, the scrap yard I go to, you can just, uh, see how easy that is? You just take those out of there, just do that right down there like that. But the scrapyard I go to, they don't make you take these strings out, so it makes it a lot quicker. You know, some scrapyards you might go to, they might make you take that out. But you know, just just ask the guy at the yard what you want, what he wants you to do. You know, sometimes they come out easy. Sometimes they'll be see like this one, that one there. See that one actually pulled out of there real easy. But sometimes they'll be manufactured in a way where where they're knotted up and you got to go through and just you know snip 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 and this is a pain in the butt but that one there happened to come out easy but you know that's that's, that's some nice aluminum there and uh so i got 13 of these and uh let's see how much they weigh and how much i get for them yeah you know, the prices are real low right now but you know they you know a few years back this these would be worth twice as much as they are today so but they're still it's still worth good money though I mean, let's see what time it is there's autumn grace's bag of jewelry she's getting shipping that off to her today getting that for free she had to pay for shipping but you know if you guys ever see anything you want on my any of my videos just holler at me i'll ship it to you for free you know unless it's a real expensive item but even then i'll still give you a, you know an awesome deal but let's see, it's uh, 2.49, and let's see how long it takes me to do this. I won't like go super fast, I'll just go normal speed and see what we're dealing with. All right, uh, 3.02, so that was 13 minutes. Well, that worked out good, didn't it? <laughs> 13 minutes to clean 13 blinds. So, can't, can't be much more precise than those numbers, I suppose. But, uh, you guys have it all in here ready to go. You know, 
you know, cleaning stuff like this to gain money. You know, when you go to start getting into scrap metal and you start cleaning stuff up to gain money, you always got to be aware that, you know, this giant, giant pile of tin I got here, you know, it has quite a bit of weight to it. So just leaving that stuff alone, I would have got 10 cents a pound with doing it without doing any work, you know. And now I've done work and all that tin you see there has went from 10 cents a pound all the way down to 4 cents a pound. But all this clean aluminum has went from 10 cents a pound up to 30 cents a pound. But you always got to be careful. You don't, you don't want to put in too much work doing something when you don't gain a lot of money. Now if the prices were up for aluminum, if aluminum was 60 cents a pound, then it, you know, it would be a no brainer. But uh, you know, I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna gain money because it's hard to tell one-handed. But that feels like it's close to 30 pounds of aluminum, 25 pounds at least. So you know, I'm still gonna gain money. But you know, if you don't have, if you're running short on time, you know, and you just there's no there's no fault in just taking it in, you know, because doing no work at all, you know, you, you got you always got to factor in factor in that into your formula so i'm gonna load all this up and get going all 13 of those blinds uh left intact weighed uh 73 pounds and for aluminum breakage it would have been 10 cents a pound so it would have been seven dollars and 30 cents taking them apart that all that aluminum sheet weighed 31 pounds uh the tin called shred at that scrap yard is uh, 42 pounds so that equals the 73 of course and that uh, for the 31 pounds of aluminum sheet and it's 42 pounds of tin the total was eleven dollars and 92 cents so actually tin has came up in my where I live it's come up uh, all the way to 5.5 cents a pound so that's 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 a nice little rise here lately that's that's really good news for everybody and uh so if i'd have just taken it to the yard without doing any work i would have all that stuff would have been seven dollars and thirty cents uh the 13 minutes it took me to clean the aluminum off the tin i i gained four dollars and sixty two cents you know so 11 seven thirty so I gained, but you know, four dollars and sixty-two cents doesn't sound like a whole lot, but you know, it, it only took me thirteen minutes. So during those thirteen minutes, when I was working, cutting on them strings, I was making about twenty dollars an hour. So you know, that's nothing to, you know, that's nothing to turn your nose up at. You know, I mean, but you know, just imagine if that aluminum, if the aluminum was up to, uh, you know, sixty cents a pound. That basically would double that price and you'd be making like 40 cents or forty dollars an hour or you know so you know the, the price for aluminum is real low right now and that's still you know it's still quite a little gain you know and it looks like aluminum's actually came up a little bit too it looks like it's 31 cents a pound now if I'm adding that up right so that's a nice little uptick in the prices there so that's good all right there it is all loaded up. I got all that aluminum stuff down in there and, and every bit of that tin I have strapped on top of it. And I'm gonna take a box of other stuff. I'm gonna carry that on my lap. And uh, it would be irresponsible of me to recommend to people to do this on a motorcycle. Uh, you know, carrying big loads like this because it, it is very dangerous. And my experience doing it, you know, I, no, don't mean to toot my own horn, but you know, it's just the truth. I, I, you know, the, the amount of hours I've done this, is, it's made me professional at it. So, you know, I'm not, that's, that's no joke. This is very dangerous to do on a motorcycle, and it'd be irresponsible of me to not say that. As far as dumpster diving on a scooter or a motorcycle, you know, there's just you just can't beat it. But uh, you, you'd want to do it more. You know, use that vehicle like that to use a motorcycle or a scooter to to go out and scout. You know, and then if you find big stuff to carry, you know, go get it in a car or a truck. You know, but because it's just this is plain dangerous, and I, I just 
I just need to throw that in there because, you know, I, that's just, yeah, I, I don't think about it in those terms because I've just been doing it so long. <laughs> that's just, I, you know, I, I just, I know what I'm doing, I guess, you know, I really can't explain it much better than that. And, you know, I mean, for, for a novice rider, that's just, it, it's extremely dangerous. So, there you go. Yahtzee! Oh, see, it's not aluminum wire, or it's not aluminum case, but see in there? See all that wire? That's all uh, number one insulated copper wire. It's, it's all fully loaded. So, even though that's a bummer there, it's not aluminum. It's tin, but all that wire in there is very valuable stuff. So, I'm going to snatch all that out of there. Hey, look at that right there. That's nice. If it works, that's a really nice scale. Look, it's still got the sticker on there and everything. That's, that's really nice. I'm taking that for my own personal use. It, it probably just needs new batteries. But, uh, let's see. Yeah. Throw some rechargeable batteries in that bad boy. That's a nice... That's a... That's a classy looking scale right there. I, I'm going to replace mine with that. It's glass. It's made out of glass anyway, so I can't scrap it anyway. So, uh... Be careful with that dude. That's gotta look nice in my bathroom. So, you know, scores like that, you know, stuff I'm not gonna sell, or stuff, stuff you won't sell if you do this. You know, you add all that kind of stuff in, and you know, the amount of money you can make really adds up. It's always good to see car jumper cables, although that's the real cheap kind, so those aren't all that great. But, uh, you know, it's still cut the ends off there and it's still number two insulated. But yeah, th those are just real cheap jumper cables, but it's still valuable though. And then, uh, Take some of this out of there. That's not too bad. Look at that. Oh. Got a computer. And a uh, hey, fan. Call the cops. You want to say no? Yes. Alright. Alright. Woo! So, judging by my thumbnail and my title, you might have thought that, you know, the dangerous thing was diving in that dumpster or driving a motorcycle. But, uh, actually, the most dangerous thing. Well, I don't know about dangerous, but the most scary thing you'll find out there is, is other people. And there, that's just a classic example right there. Now that person there pulled up and they just had a big smile on their face and <laughs> thought it was hilarious doing what they were doing. And they realized I was pointing the camera at them and, and uh, you know, just started, you know, just went from, went from you know, their great, their great uh, logic to just mumbling and then hitting the gas pedal and getting out of there as quick as possible with some, you know, just almost a deranged hoot and a thumbs up sign. So, you know, isn't it weird how a, a camera can just totally alter someone's behavior? But uh, anyways, you know, I just, you know, in any, any situation like that, you always just want to just leave. Just be polite, no matter what happens, just be polite and just leave. Because... 
you know you don't you know stuff like that could escalate so quickly you know that's almost similar to like a road rage incident although this wasn't that this one person was just out you know just literally was getting off on you know abusing another human being basically is what this person was doing i mean just the look on their face was just you know bordering on deranged and uh you know i i usually don't put people in my videos but you know you, you want to act like that out in society then you know, i don't have any problem with putting you on on my videos so but you know in situations like that you know no matter regardless of what happens even though dumpster diving is literally protected by federal law you know even though all the laws on your side just no matter what happens just be polite you know just say all right i'm leaving you know sorry just you know just diffuse the situation no matter what i just leave so i just immediately grabbed that computer and that fan and i just i just left the left the premises and i and i won't go back there for for quite some time i just avoid confrontations that's just the best way to, best way to do it you know and I just can't stress enough, you know, if you go out and dumpster dive, this type of stuff will happen to you. And you will run into some very extremely rude people. And, uh, you know, just regardless of whatever happens, that's just rule number one. Is just, just, uh, be nice and polite and just, you know, defuse the situation and leave. Because nothing's worth, you know, anything stupid, you know. You don't want to stoop to anyone else's level, so. It turned out this is only uh, this is only like a twenty dollar scale, but you know I'm surprised it's that cheap because it's just this is classy looking, isn't it? All made out of glass. It just it works perfectly. It's real nice. It's just it's just real sleek looking. I really like it. But someone just threw it away. I mean, it's, it's literally in perfect condition. Someone just threw it away because the batteries went bad. But uh, well, I assume that.